The information presented in this program is not intended as legal, health, or nutritional advice. All topics are provided for informational purposes only and are not necessarily endorsed. Neither Light On nor its host accepts responsibility for any statements, views, or opinions presented in this episode. All rights reserved. It feels like all our heroes are counterfeit. And we all know why. Because it's painful not to pretend. The world itself is just one big hoax. Do you have other files that you have looked through? Yes, there is the dossier that I am starting to write next week. And it is a dossier which concerns vaccine, experimental military medicine and liquid crystal. It's because I was talking about the different development in military research produced by the CIA in the United States in terms of vaccine and things like that. And I said, listen, it appeared from the survey and result obtained to date that it is possible to administer a vaccine inside of which there does not appear to be anything apparently and which is not offensive to health in any way. But on the other hand, the same vaccine, because of its ill-defined content, put in relation a year or two years later with another vaccine, which too seem harmless at first sight, but the two combined together will produce implausible problem. And I recently knew that it was possible without this being necessarily detected at the level of scientific analysis, that it was possible to cut in half a, crystal, a liquid crystal to put part of it in a vaccine and a year or two later, the second part is found in another vaccine. The combination of the two with the information I have at the liquid crystal level allow the control of individual via satellite in order to arrive at some point in absolute political control over population. Welcome to a special solo edition of a Light On podcast. I thought I'd take this opportunity to cover something that's been in the current events lately. You may have noticed some of these supposed uh, UFO stories going going on in the news, supposed UFO sightings. Um, supposedly, we shot down some craft, uh, although they don't really show much of anything being shot down. And so people who are who are in the know, of course, are uh, bringing up Project Blue Beam. This is something we've been talking about uh, in our community for quite some time, uh, as it uh, has always been known to be a major agenda of the uh, New World Order dickheads who are currently running the, the planet. So if you're not familiar with Project Blue Beam, this is the podcast for you. I'm going to be reading through uh, the work of uh, Serge Monast, who uh, was a Canadian uh, investigative journalist and the, the sort of a whistleblower on this material. This is going to be pretty audio heavy, uh, just kind of if you want to read along, you, you probably can. Um, and I, I may pause to... Uh, make some comments here and there, but uh, from for the most part, I'm just going to be reading through through the material. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, uh, check it out. So just a brief biography on uh, Serge Monast. Uh, he was a Canadian investigative journalist uh, who uh, is known to uh, mainly have, uh, you know, blown the whistle on Project Blue Beam, as I said, and uh, associated conspiracy theories, according to Wikipedia here. Uh, in the early 1990s, he started writing on the theme of the New World Order and conspiracies hatched by secret societies. He founded the International Free Press Agency, uh, where he published most of his work on these themes, achieving some prominence with an interview on uh, esotericist and UFO Ologist Richard Glenn's TV show, uh, Esoterisme Experimental, uh, in which he repeatedly warned his audience about the dangers of a world government. 
He was interviewed by Glenn a number of times up till uh, up to 1996. Uh, in 1994, he published Project Bluebeam, uh, in which he detailed his claim that NASA, with the help of the United Nations, was attempting to implement a new age religion with the Antichrist at its head and start a new world religion and uh, ultimately a new world order. So uh, Serge uh, was pretty much threatened in 1996. They took away his daughter, I believe. Uh, it, he and another journalist uh, both were researching Project Bluebeam, and they uh, mysteriously died of heart attacks within weeks of each other, uh, as the story goes. Um, but before that, he, you know, they took away Serge's uh, daughter. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it seems that they, uh, you know, he was being threatened for uh, releasing this information. So I'm just going to read through the work here. The infamous NASA Blue Beam Project has four different steps in order to implement the New Age religion with the Antichrist at its head. We must remember that the New Age religion is the very foundation for the New World government, without which religion the dictatorship of the New World Order is completely impossible. I'll repeat that. Without a universal belief in the New Age religion, the success of the New World Order will be impossible. That is why the Blue Beam Project is so important to them, but has been so well hidden until now. Engineered Earthquakes and Hoaxed Discoveries The first step in the NASA Blue Beam Project concerns the breakdown re-evaluation of all archaeological knowledge. It deals with the setup with artificially created earthquakes at certain precise locations on the planet of supposedly new discoveries, which will finally explain to all people the error of all fundamental religious doctrines. The falsification of this information will be used to make all nations believe that their religious doctrines have been misunderstood for centuries and misinterpreted. I kind of believe that anyway, so that's maybe not <laughs> so much a lie. I think they might just like let people in on it, to be honest with you. Psychological preparations for that first step have already been implemented with the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, the Star Trek series, and Independence Day, all of which deal with invasions from space and the coming together of all nations to repel the invaders. The later films, such as Jurassic Park, deal with the theories of evolution and claim God's words are lies. What is important to understand in the first step is that those earthquakes will hit at different parts of the world where scientific and archaeological teachings have indicated that arcane mysteries have been buried. By those types of earthquakes, it will be possible for scientists to rediscover those arcane mysteries which will be used to discredit all fundamental religious doctrines. This is the first preparation for the plan for humanity, because what they want to do is destroy the beliefs of all Christians and Muslims on the planet. To do that, they need some false proof from the far past that will prove to all nations that their religions have all been misinterpreted and misunderstood. This is really interesting because obviously all the religions can't be right, right? Uh, I personally believe that they're all man-made constructs. Um, Christianity specifically was a creation of the, the Roman kind of uh, section of the cult the roman faction of the cult uh, if you read into the the uh the piso family and all that uh so i i think uh again it's not necessarily that they're um that they're faking this stuff it's that they're you know maybe uh revealing how it was uh how it was constructed to fool people uh, because that's what it is. Those are those are constructs that have fooled people for thousands of years. You know, organized religion. That's my opinion. Don't get mad at me and leave comments about Jesus in the comment section, please. I, just, I don't care. <laughs> the Big Space Show in the Sky. 
The second step in the NASA Blue Beam project involves a gigantic space show with three-dimensional optical holograms and sounds, laser projection of multiple holographic images to different parts of the world, each receiving a different image according to predominating regional national religious faith. This new God's voice will be speaking in all languages. In order to understand that, we must study various secret services research done in the last 25 years. The Soviets have perfected the advanced computer systems, even exported them, and fed them with the minute physio-psychological particulars based on their studies of the anatomy and electromechanical composition of the human body and the studies of the electrical, chemical, and biological properties of the human brain. These computers were fed as well with the languages of all human cultures and their meanings. The dialects of all cultures have been fed into the computers from satellite transmissions. The Soviets began to feed the computers with objective programs like the ones of the new Messiah. It also seems that the Soviets, the New World Order people, have resorted to suicidal methods with the human society by uh, allocating electronic wavelengths for every person in every society and culture to induce suicidal thoughts if the person doesn't comply with the dictates of the New World Order. That's really interesting um, because, you know, since 2020, I've, I've read some things about uh, how, you know, 5G waves can, uh, can cause suicidal behavior, possibly. Um, and there was, you know, there were some anecdotal stories of things that maybe happened as a result to uh, some people being near uh, 5G towers, though I don't know, I can't really, you know, say for sure. But some people said, you know, Kate Spade w lived in a building with 5G or something early on. And um, she, of course, uh, died from suicide. So it's uh it's interesting. I think I think it's very possible uh to do that. Um, but uh, how many people actually uh, succumb to it? I don't know. There are two different aspects of step two. The first is the space show. Where does the space show come from? The space show, the holographic images, will be used in a simulation of the ending during which all nations will be shown scenes that will be the fulfillment of that which they desire to verify the prophecies and adversary events. These will be projected from satellites onto the sodium layer about 60 miles above the Earth. We see tests every once in a while, but they are called UFOs and flying saucers sightings. The result of these deliberately staged events will be to show the world the new Christ, the new Messiah, Maitreya, for the immediate implementation of the new world religion. Enough truth will be foisted upon an unsuspecting world to hook them into the lie. Even the most learned will be deceived. The idea of holograms is is pretty crazy uh, since they can actually do that. They do have the technology to do that now. Um, I don't know if you've been to a football game, but they've actually used these really very realistic holograms uh, inside the stadiums. Um, you can see, you know, they've had like birds swooping down. And I've talked to people who have actually uh, been there at games and they say it looks real, it looks completely believable like it's like it's right there you know they have hawks like swooping down or, or whatever their mascot is um all kinds of uh, of different things that they can do and so i'm sure um you know government technology is even better than that The project has perfected the ability for some devices to lift up an enormous number of people, as in a rapture, and whisk the entire group into a never-never land. We see tests of this device in the abduction of humans by those mysterious little alien greys who snatch people out of their beds and through windows into waiting motherships. The calculated resistance to the universal religion and the new messiah and the ensuing holy wars will result in the loss of human life on a scale 
never imagined before in all of human history. That's pretty terrifying. You know, we do know that, you know, religion has caused uh, many of the wars we've had already. You know, it's called the amount of bloodshed it's it's caused throughout history has been insane. So I can only imagine what it would be like um, if they, you know, told everybody it was all a lie. The Bluebeam Project will pretend to be the universal fulfillment of the prophecies of old, as major an event as that which occurred 2,000 years ago. In principle, it will make use of the skies as a movie screen on the sodium layer at about 60 miles, as space-based laser-generating satellites project simultaneous images to the four corners of the planet in every language and dialect according to the region. It deals with the religious aspect of the New World Order and is deception and seduction on a massive scale. Computers will coordinate the satellites, and software already in place will run the sky show. Holographic images are based on nearly identical signals combining to produce an image or hologram with deep perspective, which is equally applicable to acoustic ELF, VLF, and LF waves, and optical phenomena. Specifically, the show will consist of multiple holographic images to different parts of the world, each receiving a different image according to the specific national uh, regional religion. Not a single area will be excluded. With computer animation and sounds appearing to emanate from the very depths of space, astonished ardent followers of the various creeds will witness their own returned messiahs in convincing lifelike reality. Then the projections of Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, etc. will merge into one after correct explanations of the mysteries and revelations will have been disclosed. This one God will in fact be the Antichrist, who will explain that the various scriptures have been misunderstood and misinterpreted, that the religions of old are responsible for turning brother against brother and nation against nation. Therefore, old religions must be abolished to make way for the new age, new world religion, representing the one God, Antichrist, they see before them. Naturally, this superbly staged falsification will result in dissolved social and religious disorder on a grand scale, each nation blaming the other for the deception, setting loose millions of programmed religious fanatics through demonic possession on a scale never witnessed before. You can kind of see how they, you know, or why they created these religions in every part of the world, you know, these man made constructs. They wrote the books, they messed with the information, and, and there's a lot of true information in, in religious texts, but they've been messed with and encoded, and um, they've misled people with it for centuries, and it's probably all to lead up to this. Uh, I mean, the, the, the amount of preparation is insane. You, you have to remember this cult uh, moves from generation to generation. When one generation of them die off, they, you know, they, another one starts with the same goal. They're monastic in their duties uh, and their, in their um, want to achieve the new world order. In addition, this event will occur at a time of profound worldwide political anarchy and general tumult created by some worldwide catastrophe. The United Nation even now plans to use Beethoven's Song of Joy as the anthem for the introduction for the New Age, One World Religion. If we put this space show in parallel with the Star Wars program, we get this. Combination of electromagnetic radiation and hypnosis, which have also been the subject of intensive research. In 1974, for instance, researcher G. F. Schapitz said one of the research proposals that 
In this investigation, it will be shown that the spoken words of the hypnotist may also be converted by electromagnetic energy directly into the subconscious part of the human brain without employing any mechanical device for receiving or transcoding the message. And without the person exposed to such influence having a chance to control the information input consciously. It may be expected that the rationalized behavior will be considered to have been taken out of their own free will. Anyone investigating so-called channeling phenomena right now would be wise to take this area of research into consideration. It will be noted that those who think of themselves as channelers has escalated rapidly since this type of research was conducted. It is uncanny how similar their messages are, despite which entity they claim to be their source of divine guidance. It would suggest any individual considering the credibility of channeled information should be discerning and critically evaluate where the message they are receiving originates, and if the messages are specifically beneficial to the New World Order. So I guess if you believe yourself to be some kind of clairvoyant, um, then you better check yourself and uh, <laughs> figure out whether the stuff you're channeling is real or uh, or from the New World Order. The Sydney Morning Newspaper published an item on March 21st, 1983, which announced that the Soviets were invading the human mind. The article, having been submitted to the foreign editor by Dr. Nathan Abnwenji, assistant professor in the Faculty of Agriculture in Asia. It is worth quoting the article at length, even though his grammar is a little old. This article relates to the Soviets who created this uh, supercomputer we were discussing earlier, and which is really important because these types of computers can be run through satellites and through space. The computers were fed with all the different languages and their meanings. The dialect of all peoples were fed to the computers with objective programs. But we are no longer talking about the Soviets. We are talking about the United Nations, the minions of the New World Order, who are feeding the computers with the necessary information. The editor of the column in which the article appeared even states that the piece made points too important to ignore. I think it is possible that the persons who have created this megamind control program could sell the software to an organization and not be aware that the client might use the program and data to enslave all of humankind. Just imagine how far they have advanced since the article was published. And that's a really good point. Um, technology has advanced. That's a that's a good thing to remember. With a lot of this stuff, it it could have changed considerably. We don't really know. I mean, they've definitely they've definitely advanced things. Also, the use of space in this uh, in this document, I you know, I would question even the cosmology of the new world order if you go back in history and you you tend to uh <laughs> come across a lot of like jesuit influence in the uh in the model that we use now so uh without making any really broad claims i would uh i wouldn't stop at any of these other fields of study uh they're they're all full of bullshit <laughs> so um you know, take uh, the stuff they say about deep space, maybe with a grain of salt. Uh, I'm not really sure it is what they say it is. As crazy as you may think that sounds. That's that's the thing that's really funny to me is like, you know, we talk a lot about how virology is complete bunk. You know, it's completely made up. Um. But people then like refuse to believe that other fields of study are also full of shit. <laughs> They're all full of shit. They're the the sort of, you know, science as it's uh, told to us on this planet isn't really what they say it is. It's full of presuppositions, bad science. Um, so I don't really understand when people fail to to look in, uh, look further 
at uh, at things in in different fields of study. They, they just tend to stay in in one or two. They know those are bullshit, but uh, you know they they can't really connect the rest of the dots. Um, so it, it's it's important to uh, to keep searching there because they've they've really they've constructed a they've constructed the world that they want they want us to know uh, or believe and uh, it is a pile of steaming horseshit artificial thought and communication the advancement of techniques propel us toward the third step in the Blue Beam project that goes along with the telepathic and electronically augmented two-way communication where ELF, VLF, and LF waves will reach each person from within his or her own mind, convincing each of them that their own God is speaking to them from the very depths of their own soul. Such rays from satellites are fed from the memories of computers that have stored massive data about every human on Earth and their languages. Oh boy, that's terrifying. I wonder if that's where all our uh, our files are going that they save off our cell phones and everything we're doing online. The rays will then interlace with their natural thinking to form what we call diffuse artificial thought. That kind of technology goes into the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s research where the human brain has been compared to a computer. Information is fed in, processed, integrated, and then a response is formulated and acted upon. Mind controllers manipulate information the same way a computer for grammar manipulates information. In January 1991, the University of Arizona hosted a conference entitled The NATO Advanced Research Workshop on Current and Emergent Phenomena in Biomolecular Systems. What does that mean exactly? It means this. We refer to one paper that was delivered at the conference which stands out for its different attitude toward the development under discussion at that time. It was in fact a protest and chilling warning to the attending scientists about the potential abuse of their research findings. Their findings, of course, stated that the United States has already developed communications equipment which can make the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. It can uh, relieve the terminally ill from pain without the use of drugs or surgery. I'm not talking about science fiction. A man might retain the use of all his faculties right up to the moment of his death. This communications equipment depends upon a completely new way of looking at the human brain and neuromuscular systems and radiation pulses at ultra-low frequencies. Some of this equipment is now operational within the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. It will never be used to make the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk because it is a central it is central to the domestic political agenda and foreign policy of George Bush and his puppet masters of the New World Order. Domestically, the new communications equipment is being used to torture and murder persons who match profiles imagined to be able to screen a given population for terrorists, to torture and murder citizens who belong to organizations which promote tolerance and peace and development in Central America, to torture and murder citizens who belong to organizations who oppose the development and deployment of nuclear weapons, and to create a race of slave cult automatons, or what is popularly called the Mancurian Candidate. Overseas experimentation is taking place on hostages held by the United States and Canada, Great Britain, Australia, Germany, Finland, and France. Additionally, there has been a long series of bizarre suicides among British computer scientists, all of whom have had some connection to the United States Navy. What is possible to ask before such a psychology of terror is this. Would any government corporation or psychiatrist willfully promote such horror today? The answer is quite obviously yes. Government agencies 
and the corporations that work with them toward New World Order are prepared to promote anything that will help them achieve their objective of total social control. As for the question of why, for one thing, if you terrify the public and make them fear for their safety, they will allow you to implement draconian law enforcement practice, disarm them, and keep extensive records on them. And they only have to tell you that it is all to protect you, of course. Secondly, it promotes the decay of the present democratic forms of political systems and leads societies to search for alternative methods of political ideology. Of course, the alternative has already been planned. It is called the New World Order, and it will not have your safety or interests at heart. As George Bush said, read my lips. Fear has always been used by powerful elite to control and subjugate the masses. The old maxim, divide and conquer, is being played out to the limit worldwide to ensure that everyone is frightened for their personal safety and to be suspicious of everyone else. This, too, is mind control. I talk about that a lot, the divide and conquer strategy or uh, the Hegelian dialectic that they've used forever um, that is very, very prominent in society from... uh, Politics. Politics is a great uh, example. The two-party system, organized religion. Again, um, they they have these dialectics that they use to keep people fighting amongst themselves uh, because the divide and conquer strategy is very real and uh, and is very necessary. So while we're all fighting about that or thinking that our vote matters, well. They're synthesizing their true goal out of that. Um, And we're just, you know, constantly running in circles. It really is mind control. And it's so hard for people to get out of that, especially the the political uh, legal system. It's all it's all a facade. Um, No good is ever going to come from your government because government is a system of slavery. Um, it's just that's the definition of what government is. Government literally means mind control. To go further in regard to the new technology, which is at the base of the NASA Blue Beam project, we have to consider this statement by psychologist James V. McConnell, which was published in a 1970s issue of Psychology Today. He said, The day has come when we can combine sensory deprivation with drug hypnosis and astute manipulation of reward and punishment to gain almost absolute control over an individual's behavior. It should then be possible to achieve a very rapid and highly effective type of positive brainwashing that would allow us to make dramatic changes in a person's behavior and personality. Now, when we talked before about that kind of ray in the telepathic and electronically augmented communication, the kind of rays that are fed from the memories of computers, which store massive data about humans, human language and dialects, and we said that the people will be reached from within, making each person to believe that his own God is speaking directly from within his or her own soul, we refer to that kind of technology and that kind of thinking that that same psychologist was espousing. That is, we should be trained from birth that we should all do what society wants us to do rather than what we want to do for ourselves. That because they have the technology to do it, no one should be allowed to have their own individual personality. This statement And these ideas are important because it is basic teaching of the United Nations that no one owns his or her own personality. And that same psychologist claims that no one has any say-so about the kind of personality they acquire. And there is no reason to believe you have the right to refuse to acquire a new personality if your old personality is considered antisocial. What is important in this declaration is that the new world order will be set up over the current system, meaning the old way of thinking and behavior and religion will be considered the old and incorrect way of thinking, and that they can change it 
at one of their eradication camps of the United Nations to make sure that anyone with this antisocial behavior will be disposed of quickly so that other modified individuals will be able to fulfill the needs and agendas of the New World Order without being distracted by the truth. Could this be the greatest mind control project ever? The NASA Blue Beam Project is the prime directive for the New World Order's absolute control over the population of the entire Earth. I would suggest you investigate this information carefully before dismissing it as a fanatic lunacy. If we go further in the different reports we have presented, we find that the mind control operations and technology include a transmitter that broadcasts at the same frequency as the human nervous system. Which transmitter is manufactured by the Loral Electro Optical Systems in Pasadena, California? Loral, a major defense contractor, has previously conducted research on directed energy weapons for Lieutenant General Leonard Perez of the U.S. Air Force, who was searching for a weapon that could implant messages into the minds of the enemy while urging his own troops on to superhuman deeds of valor. The device employs electromagnetic radiation of gigahertz frequencies, microwaves, pulsed at extremely low frequencies, ELF. It is used to torture people both physically and mentally from a distance. This is uh, super uh, fascinating because uh, obviously, again, we know about 5G and uh, they've been using you know, some sort of 5G technology for a while. They were first using it in the military. You know, they could uh, beam, it, beam it at people for crowd dispersal. That's the same kind of technology, uh, millimeter waves, I believe. Um, and I mean, and they've, I mean, they've been studying this stuff with brain, brain waves forever, trying to mind control people. Uh, I believe Project Pandora was one of them. Um, there was all kinds of, you know, projects and, you know, black projects they've, they've done over the years, um, leading up to this. Weapons of this type are thought to have been used against a British woman protesting the presence of American cruise missiles at the Greenham Common Air Base during the 1970s. This weapon can be used to induce total sensory deprivation by broadcasting signals into the auditory nerve at such high power that it blocks the ability of the individual to hear themselves think. They can do so much with electromagnetic radiation and you know, electromagnetic magnetic waves, uh, e even your television. I mean, I've done, uh, I've done little short films on, on that, how even your television is brainwashing you. Even during the, the sixties, they were brainwashing people using the, the TV at night. Um, Space Busters did a great, uh, film on that. Uh, so, uh, something about, uh, trust Naomi. I can't remember the actual name of the, the film, but, uh, yeah, it was great. The process employed by such ELF technology are described in various U.S. Defense Department publications, including one entitled The Electromagnetic Spectrum and in Low-Intensity Conflict by Captain Paul E. Tyler, Medical Commandant, U.S. Navy, which is included in a collection entitled Low-Intensity Conflict and Modern Technology Edict by Lieutenant Colonel David G. Dean, USAF. The paper was delivered in 1984 and the collection published 1986 by Air University Press, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Another pulse microwave device can deliver audible signals directly to an individual while remaining undetectable to anyone else. The technology is very simple and can be built by using an ordinary police radar gun. The microwave beam generated by the device is modulated at audio frequencies and can broadcast messages directly into the brain. Now here we come to the NASA Blue Beam Project. The broadcasting of subliminal two-way communication and images from the depths of space correspond directly to that kind of technology. 
In his book, The Body Electric, Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Robert O. Becker describes a series of experiments conducted in the early 1960s by Alan Fry, where this phenomenon was demonstrated as well as later experiments conducted in 1973 at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research by Dr. Joseph C. Sharp, who personally underwent tests in which he uh, proved he could hear and understand messages delivered to him in an echo-free isolation chamber via a pulsed microwave audiogram, which is an uh, analog of the words sound vibration beamed into his brain. Becker then goes on to state, Such a device has obvious application for covert operations designed to drive a target crazy with unknown voices or deliver undetectable instructions to a programmed assassin. That's an especially terrifying quote, given what we know about uh, things that have happened throughout history uh, with assassinations. And they, you know, a lot of them say, even school shooters say they hear, they, they heard voices, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, there's no telling what, uh, what may have programmed them to do something. You know, if they have an agenda, they can just program an assassin. Instant false flag. Now figure out, when we hear that voice from the New World Messiah, who would be speaking from space to all of the sane people on the earth who might give instructions to zealots and religious fanatics. We would see hysteria and social mayhem on a scale never witnessed before on this planet. No police forces in the world, even as a combined front, could deal with the disorder that will follow. A 1978 book entitled Microwave Auditory Effect and Application by James C. Lynn describes how audible voices can be broadcast directly into the brain. This technology could actually allow the blind to see and the deaf to hear. Instead, it has been turned into a weapon to enslave the world. And if you're interested in uh, hearing more about this stuff like EMF radiation, 5G and all that stuff, we have done um, some we have done some episodes on it for sure. Uh, me and uh, Remy did an episode fairly early on all about all about that uh you want to check that out i think that was the first time i had remy remy vega on check out that episode if you're interested and uh also i did interview uh arthur furstenberg who wrote uh you know one of like the the bibles on uh on the subject called the invisible rainbow uh it's a great book on all this stuff uh, not only for emf but also related to your health Anyway, we'll continue. Alan Fry also reports that he could speed up, slow down, or stop the hearts of isolated frogs by synchronizing the pulsed rate of a microwave beam with the heart itself. According to Dr. Robert Becker, similar results have been obtained using live frogs, which shows that it is technically feasible to produce heart attacks with rays designed to penetrate the human chest. Editor's Note both the author of this report and his colleague died of heart attacks, only days apart. We should mention also that Dr. Becker does not participate in such research. It has been demonstrated that focused ultra-high-frequency UHF electromagnetic energy beams can be used to induce considerable agitation and muscular activity or induce muscular weakness and lethargy. Microwaves can also be used to burn human skin and aid the effect of drugs, bacteria, and poisons or affect the function of the entire brain. These effects were all revealed at length by the CIA on September 21, 1977, in testimony before the Subcommittee on Health and Scientific Research. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, who directed the MK Ultra program at the time, was forced to discuss the scope of the CIA's research to find techniques of activation of the human organism by remote electronic means. So this is something that exists right now that has been pursued to its highest degree. 
that can be used from space to reach any person, any place on the face of the earth. If we go deeper in that process of mind control over the people, we find that the equipment and technology has been used to influence politics in a much more direct fashion. Michael Dukakis, the Democrat candidate running against George Bush in the 1988 election, was targeted with microwave technology in order to impede his public speaking performance once the public opinion polls showed he uh, posed a serious threat to Bush's election prospects. He also claims that the equipment was used against Kitty Dukakis and drove her to the brink of suicide. In the Disneyland world of U.S. politics, a presidential candidate with problems such as these would obviously lose their race to the White House. Good thing Biden wasn't around. <laughs> In the December 1980 edition of the U.S. Army Journal called the Military Review, a column by Lieutenant Colonel John B. Alexander entitled The New Mental Battlefield, Beam Me Up Spock, provides further insight into the technical capabilities at the disposal of the comptroller. He writes, Several examples will demonstrate areas in which progress have been made. The transference of energy from one organism to another, the ability to heal or cause disease to be transmitted over a distance, wasn't that interesting? Thus inducing illness or death from no apparent cause. Telepathic behavior modification, which includes the ability to induce hypnotic states up to a distance of a thousand kilometers, have been reported. The use of telepathic hypnosis also holds great potential. This capability could allow agents to be deeply planted with no conscious knowledge of their programming. In movie terms, the Mancurian candidate lives and does not even require a telephone call. Other mind induction techniques are being considered. If perfected, this capability could allow the direct transference of thought via telepathy from one mind or group of minds to a select target audience. The unique factor in that the recipient will not be aware that thought has been implanted from an external source he or she will believe the thoughts are original. This is exactly what we were talking about. The third step in the NASA Blue Beam project is called the Telepathic Electronic Two-Way Communication. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander's article continues. If it is possible to feed artificial thought into the multigenic field via satellite, the mind control of the entire planet is now possible. An individual's only resistance would be to constantly question the motivation behind their thoughts and not act upon thoughts which they consider to be outside their own ideological, religious, and moral boundaries. Once again, it is wise to consider how television, advertising, modern education, and various types of social pressure are used to manipulate those boundaries. It has been reported by Lieutenant Colonel Alexander, who said in the summary of his Military Review article, The information on those kinds of technologies presented here would be considered by some to be ridiculous since it does not conform to their view of reality. Yeah, well, people need to understand that reality, what we consider reality, is changing very fast. Uh, it changed a long time ago, I think, and people have been kept... Uh, you know, with the wool over their eyes, clearly, that's that's very apparent at this point. But if you think this is a joke, uh, I mean, you can you can look up articles that will basically tell you they've been working on this for quite some time. We have articles. Uh, here's Life Science. Uh, Talking lasers that beam messages into your head could be here in five years, Pentagon says. As part of a military initiative called the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons uh, Directorate, the project aims to create laser weapons that can transmit clear snippets of human speech across long distances. To accomplish this task, the weapon uses a principle called the laser-induced plasma effect, which involves firing an incredibly powerful laser to create a ball of plasma then shooting a second laser to oscillate the plasma, creating sound waves. 
With enough laser bursts fired at the right frequencies, the plasma vibrations can actually mimic human speech. They've been working on this for a very, very long time, guys. It's not conspiracy theory. It's science. Follow the science, right? That's what they that's what they tell us. We're just following the science. Yeah, you can find all kinds of articles on this. A voice only you can hear. DARPA's sonic projector. Wired.com. Imagine a weapon that creates sound that only you can hear. Science fiction? No. This is one area that has a very solid basis in reality. The Air Force has experimented with microwaves that create sounds in people's head, which they've called a possible psychological warfare tool. Yeah, and that psychological warfare tool is for you. The American technologies can beam sounds to specific... Uh, it doesn't... What does this say there? Now the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency is jumping on the bandwagon with their new sonic projector program. The goal of the sonic projector program is to provide special forces with a method of surreptitious audio communication uh, at distances over 1 km. Sonic projector technology is based on the nonlinear interaction of sound in air translating an ultrasonic signal into audible sound. Same deal. Let's continue. But some people still believe the world is flat. <laughs> now this means a lot, because if people do not believe this kind of technology is possible, or that it is science fiction... Those people put themselves in great jeopardy because on the night when those thousand stars will shine from space, during the night when the new Messiah will be presented to the world, they will not be prepared and will have no time to prepare to save themselves against that kind of technology. They don't believe and they won't take time to prepare. This is exactly what happens to people who are convinced by Satan into believing that he doesn't exist so they have no defense against him. You know, I see Satan as this adversarial evil force in the universe, whatever the universe is. Uh, but its uh, I don't believe it's a, it's a guy with horns. That's also kind of part of the agenda, you know what I mean? But all that, I think all that stuff is representative of other things. Satan comes from uh, the Hebrew word shaitan. Yeah, it means adversary. Universal supernatural manifestations via electronics. The fourth step concerns the universal supernatural manifestation with electronic means. It contains three different orientations. One is to make mankind believe that an alien off-world invasion is about to occur at every major city on Earth in order to provoke each major nation to use its nuclear weapons in order to strike back. This way, the United Nations Court will require that all those nations which launch nuclear weapons to disarm when the invasion is shown to have been false. And how will the United Nations know that the invasion was false? They will have staged it, of course. The second is to make the Christians believe that the rapture is going to occur with the supposed divine intervention of an alien, off-world civilization coming to rescue earthlings from a savage and merciless demon. Its goal will be to dispose of all significant opposition to the implementation of the new world order in one major stroke. Actually, within hours of the beginning of the Sky Show, the third orientation in the fourth step is a mixture of electronic and supernatural forces. The waves used at the time will allow supernatural forces to travel through optical fibers, coaxial cables, TV, electrical, and phone lines in order to penetrate to everyone at once through major appliances. Embedded chips will already be in place. The goal of this uh, 
deals with global satanic ghosts projected all around the world in order to push all populations to the edge of hysteria and madness. To drown them into a wave of suicide, murder, and permanent psychological disorders. After the night of the thousand stars, worldwide populations will be ready for the new Messiah to reestablish order and peace at any cost, even at the cost of abdication of freedom. So that sounds very much like one of their favorite mottos, order out of chaos, right? That's um, that's their deal. They got to create disorder and then synthesize, you know, something new out of it, a new order. Um, as far as these embedded chips, this whole thing, uh, like I said earlier, a you know we we have to pay attention to technological advancement. Um, I don't think they're going to be using, you know, big big chips. They have they have things like graphene uh, nanoparticles, uh, which can hold a charge, hold information, you know, things on the nano scale that are way better than than microchips um although they still i mean who knows they still could uh use it if if everybody uh were enslaved to that point uh they might phasing out cash and independence the techniques used in the fourth step is exactly the same used in the past in the ussr to force the people to accept communism the same technique will be used by the United Nations to implement the new world religion and the new world order. A lot of people ask when this is going to happen and how they will accomplish the visions of the night of the thousand stars and the events that will point to the days when it will begin. According to the many reports we have received, we believe it will begin with some kind of worldwide economic disaster. Not a complete crash, but enough to allow them to introduce some kind of in-between currency before they introduce their electronic cash to replace all paper or plastic money. The in-between currency will be used to force anyone with savings to spend or turn in their cash because they understand that people who have money and are not dependent upon them might be the very ones who will mount an insurrection against them. If everyone is broke, no one can fund a war of any kind. Paper currency will cease to exist. This is one of the first signs. And we're getting very close to that, I think. Um, you know, I think it's only a matter of time before the economic system crashes, uh, which is very scary. Uh, I, I tell everybody to use as much cash as, as they can. And not, uh, you know, not push ideas like Bitcoin. <laughs> Believe it or not, people even within the the freedom movement, you know, are are all about Bitcoin and and digital currency. The last thing we need is digital currency. When our currency goes digital, we are absolutely fucked. Point blank period, we are so fucked. We do not need digital currency. We don't need digital anything. It, it, you know, if you're listening to this, it you know, it's it's very obvious that the agenda is pretty much all digital so anything in that regard you, you you should be running away from you should be backing away from the digital agenda okay and currency is a big one we don't need to put all currency into a controllable digital thing i don't care if you think it's decentralized they'll find a way to fuck with it we've talked about this on the show before anyway but to implement the world's electronic money system, everyone in the world who might have money in the future will have to have a way to transfer money electronically. Before that time, everyone will have spent, before that year, 2000 all of their cash, reserves, and assets. Everyone has to be 100% dependent upon the council for their existence. To prevent any kind of independence, the New World Order has already implanted microchips in wild animals, birds, fish, etc. Why? They want to make certain that the people who will not accept the New World Order will not be able to hunt or fish anywhere in the world. If they try, they will be tracked and traced by satellites, then hunted down and imprisoned or killed. I'm not sure about the whole microchip in animals thing. I mean, they could all 
also be injecting them with who knows what or um you know viruses are a big thing so we talk about viruses so much they they love to use their little avian flus to destroy uh the food i think uh it's much more likely that that they'll probably do something like that or who knows there's stories about uh chicken feed right now uh causing chickens to not lay eggs so we who knows i think you know microchips is so old school, bro. Let's continue. Uh, the New World Order is already changing the laws of all nations to make everyone dependent upon a single food and vitamin supply. They are changing laws about religion and psychiatric disorders in order to identify anyone who is potentially threatening to the New World Order. Those who are found defective will be sent to eradication camps where their organs will be taken and sold to the highest bidders. I'm just processing that information. <laughs> Those who are not killed outright will be used as, as slave labor or used in medical experiments. The goal of a dictatorship is to control everyone, everywhere on the planet, ruthlessly and without exception. That's why the new technology being introduced everywhere is a technology for the control of the people. The technology of the 1940s and 1950s was used to help the people have an easier and more productive life. The new technology is designed and built to track down and control people everywhere. This technology is being manufactured for a specific purpose and to refuse to see and recognize that purpose, which is to enslave the entire populations of the world, is to deny the emergence of the Antichrist and the establishment of the New World Order religion and government. If you cannot see, if you cannot learn, if you cannot understand, then you and your family and friends will succumb to the fires of the crematoria that have been built in every state and every major city on earth built to deal with you. No one is safe in a totalitarian police state. And that's the end. That is obviously a very terrifying document. Um, I don't want to scare anybody, but... Um, this is definitely important information, I think, to know. So, uh, that's some of Serge Monast's work. It's, uh, it's eerie and chilling and terrifying. So it seems very apparent that, uh, technology is really our biggest enemy right now, which is really unfortunate because it's advanced at such a, uh, a pace that, uh, it's kind of unstoppable. I mean, we've got uh, 5G towers everywhere, 6G on the way, and they've talked about uh, crazy shit already with the 6G, using uh, humans as antennas or something like that. Let's see if I can find that really quick. <laughs> yeah. Scientists want to use people as antennas to power 6G. <laughs> that sounds healthy. I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up, guys. <laughs> it's really like, it's beyond uh, science fiction at this point. That's the thing that kills me is like the people who think we're just crazy conspiracy nuts. Uh, this information is out there. It's in stuff that you read, you know? Th these are normie articles, <laughs> popular mechanics. The future of 6G telecommunications could come from visible light communication. Researchers at the University of Massachusetts Amherst believe using humans as part of the antenna system offers the most efficient way to harvest waste energy. In the process, humans could wear coiled copper the hell <laughs> these people are psychopaths and, and just the idea of 6g being implemented is uh you know that should terrify you because every time they implement a new uh a new frequency people get sick 
you know, until we acclimate to it. And uh, all kinds of other stuff can happen. It really is all about energy, frequency. You know, te- I repeat it all the time. Tesla told us. Tesla told us what was up. It's all about frequency. That's what everything is based on. You know, the earth is singing us a frequency, a love song every day. And we've interfered with it. We are in tune with the with the earth. Our brains work on the same kind of resonance as the earth. So it's supposed to be singing us a love song, but this cult of demons introduced non-native frequencies and uh, have changed that song. So we're not really in tune with the earth as we're supposed to be, as we were naturally intended. All, all these implementations, beginning with power lines, have changed the harmonics and um, and frequency of the earth. I really recommend people uh, read The Invisible Rainbow and uh, Dr. Becker's work, uh, The Body Electric. It's really great. And check out uh, the other podcasts I mentioned. Uh, Remy and I did something on nanotech. So find out about this stuff. Research research something that makes you uncomfortable, too. You know, a lot of people are too comfortable in the, the kind of dialectics that they exist in, the uh, constructs that they don't want to leave. And I've said, you know, religion is a big one. You know, th- there's a reason that they're that they're pushing this satanic agenda all the time. You see it in, you know, the foot, uh, the Super Bowl halftime shows and, you know, Sam Smith, that dickhead dressing up like a, like the devil or whatever. They're, they're pushing that sort of um, biblical ideology for a reason to fool people because they're gearing up for this event. This is the ultimate event. So they get people um, on this dialectic of, you know, Jesus versus Satan, and then they'll project, you know, satanic demons everywhere, and and um, it'll be easier to fool people. That's why they're that's why they're in, they've been introducing this into the mainstream, uh, the media everywhere, video games, you name it. It's it's satanic as fuck. I mean, go go play. I play Call of Duty. It's it's insane the amount of satanic imagery, and like kids on there, you can see them in their names, their handles. They have like six six six. They think it's cool, you know. It's been implemented as this sort of cool thing. Even you know, rock and roll music for a long time now. Metal music. It's uh, and and people don't even realize it. It's so embedded. You know, rock on. They do like the devil horns and stuff. Like, I think everybody's done that uh, because they didn't realize what, what it really what it really is. Like, it's been made to be this cool pop culture thing. Um, but there's a reason for it. There's a, re- there's a reason they want to show you all of this stuff. And the agendas are so uh, twisted. You don't really know what the truth is. You know, sometimes they'll they'll tell you that that the truth is a lie, but it's really the truth. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Um they'll they'll pawn something off as a lie, but it will really be the truth. Like even in this document, you know, I found stuff that's uh, really kind of subversive. Like the the idea of aliens, for example. I uh, I of course can't really know. I've never seen aliens. I've never seen any of that. Um, but I do believe that there are demonic entities. I think that they are. Uh, they're interfacing with something, some other dark energy or consciousness outside of this realm. I think that's why they do their their little uh, satanic uh, rituals. And they've done this throughout throughout history. 
ancient cultures you can see you know all these this uh this it's always one priest class you know the royals the uh the nobles of every culture committing sacrifice to gods right who are those gods um you know we're told we're told this information in such a way that we think oh well these these cultures were stupid they just you know they believed in silly gods that you know that didn't exist or they did it for the you know the sun and um nature for for har harvests or what have you <clears throat> but there very well could be an energy that is bringing them things giving them information they're tapping into another frequency and we don't know what kind of beings or demonic entities are in that frequency. I think there's something to be said about the whole gray, the gray alien thing. And um, even, you know, the, the reptilian thing. Uh, and a lot of people think that's crazy. Uh, and that's fine. But, uh, you know, they could be, there, there could very well be something. And so if they pull, if they pull something like this, we don't even know if it if it really will be fake because everybody is expecting uh them to fake it right because they know blue beam well it's this fake thing that will happen um but they're so sinister and underhanded that they would they would put information out there like that just in case to try and trick us so you know the people who are in the know also get fooled so you you really have to be on your toes. We we have no way of knowing what they really have. I think there if there are other entities, they've been uh, they've been on this earth for a long, long time. Um, and maybe I'll go more into that in in another episode or a film. Uh, but it is it's it's very crazy to think about. But a lot of people believe in greys. So, you know, if you believe in greys, then who knows what else there is? Do we believe that there's only one species of of alien? I don't know. But I don't think they're coming from space. You know what I mean? Although I think that, uh, who knows? We don't really know what the stars are. It could be, you know, there there could be star uh stargates right that's been in in kind of popular lore for a while we don't know if those are uh, somehow portals or nobody knows nobody knows anything because they've kept everything from everyone but it's important to consider all aspects of everything and consider that what you believe is a lie really is the truth pawned off as a lie. That's how they work. That's how underhanded and uh, subversive these people are. And they've been doing this since uh, the beginning of time. Let me know what you thought of this of this podcast, of this information. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, uh, it would be great if you did. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, um, there are links in the in the caption. Please make sure you're subscribed on all uh, of my various platforms. That would be really helpful. Uh, I'm on Spotify and Apple. Uh, running the ads on that helps me out a tiny bit. Um, if you can uh if you can try to do that that'd be great uh, also make sure you follow me on bitshoot and odyssey those are sort of my major uh backup channels and i also i only post uh, my little films and videos there i don't do that anywhere else um so it's a great idea to um to follow me everywhere if you can um that'd be wonderful and also instagram at a light on podcast would love to see you there so thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening and share this with your friends.
was a corporate manager of Fairchild Industries in 1974 through 77, I met the late Dr. Werner von Braun in early 74. At that time, von Braun was dying of cancer, but he assured me that he would live a few more years in order to tell me about the game that was being played, that game being the effort to weaponize space, to control the earth from space and space itself. The strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy. In fact, when I met him in 74, they were the enemy, the identified enemy. We were told that they had killer satellites. We were told that they were coming to get us and control us, the dirty commies, that whole story. First, the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. We heard a lot about terrorism. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. We now call them nations of concern. But he said that would be the third enemy against whom we would be needing to build space-based weapons. And the next enemy was asteroids. Now at this point, he kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. So it was funny then. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card. And remember, Carol, the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens. And all of it, he said, is a lie. At two levels, uh, could the UFO phenomenon be manipulating us? Could it be a teaching system of some sort? Mm -hmm. Perhaps something that we are creating ourselves, perhaps a, a series of images that we are projecting. I think Carl Jung came very close to, to expressing that idea in, in one of his books. Or could it be manipulated purposely by people who have the technology to uh, simulate UFO sightings? And mm -hmm. people say, well, of course not. Who would do a thing like that? Well. I will remind you that during Watergate, during the Watergate investigation, it was discovered that there was a plan uh, originated in the White House to uh, surface a submarine off the coast of Cuba and paint the second coming of Christ over the island of Cuba using holograms, oh, and, yeah. <laughs> which is well within our technology today. The idea was that since there is a large Catholic population in Cuba, they would be so upset by this vision that this would saturate the communication channels, you know, the telephone system in Cuba, long enough for an invasion to take place. How interesting. I never heard of that. Well, I think that's, uh, you know, a classic in psychological warfare, but mm -hmm. that kind of uh, manipulation is, mm -hmm. is well understood. And I have personally investigated several apparently you know, genuine UFO cases where there was, in fact, a manipulation. My, my conclusion, the conclusion of scientists working with me, was that there was, in fact, a manipulation taking place and that it was not a hoax on the part of the witnesses, but a hoax on the part of somebody much better organized than. Them.